The second technology that I'll be talking about is called electrospinning. This technology is based on the use of, of an electric force to draw charged filaments of the polymer solutions or the polymer melts. This technology has seen many applications so far in areas such as medical, filtration, and composites applications. Next slide, please. This slide contains a picture of a typical electrospinning unit. Most of the work that has been done thus far on the electrospinning of battery separators has been done only at the academic level. Work has been progressing on the implementation of the technology to an industrial level, however. Next slide, please. DuPont has produced a product named Energain, and the name, the name and spelling for that particular separator is provided on this slide. It is based on electrospinning of a proprietary polyimide formulation. In addition to the, to the fact that the actual details of the polyimide are not disclosed, the details of the process that is used to produce the present, to, to produce the battery separators are not openly disclosed in the open literature. Next slide, please. Due to the presence of PI in the separator, it displays excellent high temperature performance. It also displays very good wettability features. Batteries that are produced using the separator display high power features. Next slide, please. Okay, as I said, due to the presence of the PE, PI in the separator, it displays excellent high temperature performance. Next slide, please. There are several issues with the separator, however. First, polyimides have a tendency, have a tendency to be quite expensive polymers. This is primarily because of the high cost of the monomers that are used to produce the polyimide polymer. The separators that are produced have low puncture strength values, and this can be an issue with the safety that they provide to the final battery pr produced. <coughs> Finally, the electrospinning process of the polyimide requires the use of a solvent. This could lead to toxicity concerns depending upon the actual chemical nature of the solvent that is, util that, that is utilized. Next slide, please. Now we will discuss another dry processes approach that is based on the use of beta nucleated polypropylene. It is well established in the polymer literature that polypropylene can exist in different crystalline forms and the transition to the beta form to the more stable alpha form creates pores in the films that contain beta crystals. This change can be induced during the biaxial stretching of the films themselves. Next slide, please. There are four steps in the production of separators that are made using this technology and this approach. First, the mixture that contains the beta nucleotide agent is extruded. The cast film then needs to be quenched at elevated temperatures to freeze in or to quench in the beta crystal type. The film is then stretched in the machine direction to produce four pores in the structure, and it is further stretched in a transverse direction to adjust the pore structure and the, mecha and the mechanical properties of the final separator. Next slide, please. Summarizing the section, on the different separator production processes, two processes are, are mainly commercially presently used. However, they are somewhat limited in terms of the type of polymers that can be used in each process. This is particularly true of the dry process technology. 
This means there are also limits in terms of the thermal stability that can be achieved with the separators that are made. Due to this fact, alternative processes that use other polymers are being investigated. The main driving force for many of these developments is the safety that is needed for batteries in electric vehicles. And this will continue to be <coughs> a main motivation for many of the developments that I will talk about during the remainder of this training as well. Next slide, please. Now attention will be given to the properties of some of the battery separators. Next slide, please. This slide provides a summary of typical properties that are reported in the literature for dry process separators. The properties which are shown on this slide are for PP monolayer separators. One point that always needs to be brought up about these data is that the properties are different in the machine direction compared to the transverse direction. This is because the orientation of the film in the dry process occurs only in the one direction. However, this also means that there will be no shrinkage in the TD as noted from the data in this table where, 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 the, last issue, where the last entry shows that there is 3% shrinkage in the MD and 0% shrinkage in the TD. Next slide, please. This table on this slide contains a summary of properties of separators that are made using the wet process technology. First, the thickness variation that is observed in these type of separators is less than for the dry process separators. In addition, the tensile strength values and the shrinkage values are more balanced than the case of separators that are made by the dry process. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the comparison of the dry process separators to the wet process separators. First, as I just noted, and, and as I had previously discussed, the wet process separators have more balanced properties than do the dry process separators. The wet process separators have higher puncture strength values. This is typically attributed to the fact that those separators are biaxially oriented, and it is generally believed that it is this biaxial orientation process that provides the increase in puncture strength. On the other hand, since the dry process separators are only uniaxially oriented, they do not display TD shrinkage values. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about some current trends in separators that I'm very much aware of. Next slide, please. There are three general trends that, we, that we'll be talking about. First, separators that have, that have improved high temperature melt integrity or HTMI will be discussed. Then developments in thinner separators will be highlighted. Finally, work with ceramic coated separators we talked about. Next slide, please. First, let's talk about HTMI separators. Again, most of these developments are based on the fact that batteries for EV or electric vehicle applications are larger than those batteries for consumer electronics uses. This means, and this translates into the fact that there's a higher potential for what is called thermal runaway in these EV batteries compared to consumer electronics batteries. Therefore, the separator must provide increased thermal stability at elevated temperatures to provide safety to the lithium ion battery in the electric vehicle application. Next slide, please. Two approaches have been tried and examined in this regard. First, inorganic fillers such as calcium carbonate and titanium dioxide have been added to polyolefins in the extruded formulation. Second, high temperature polymers have been tried in the current dry process approach. 
Next slide, please. The addition of several different fillers, such as calcium carbonate and titanium dioxide, has been done to, to dry process separator formulations. As I said, the addition of these materials occurs during the actual extrusion process, I'm sorry, the extrusion step in the process itself. The concentration level that is, that is allowable in this approach, however, is limited to about 30% by weight. About that loading level of filler, the correct morphology can no longer be established during the film extrusion process. This, this effect is likely due to an increase in the melt viscosity of the polymer due to the presence of the filler in the formulation. Batteries that contain separators that are based on this approach do show some improvement in safety as based upon abuse testing, such as nail penetration testing. Next slide, please. The other approach involves the use of high temperature polymers in the current dry process. Microporous films were made from polymethylpentene and the films were tested in batteries. Once again, batteries that were made using these PMP separators showed a slight improvement in battery abuse testing, such as nail penetration and ball crush testing. Next slide, please. Separators that are made by the wet process can also include inorganic fillers. For example, up to 60% fillers like silica and titanium dioxide can be added to ultra high molecular weight PE in wet process separator formulations. And please understand the addition of these fillers is, 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 is in fact in addition to the addition of the processing oil. In particular, in TMA testing, separator formulations have been defined that retain up to 80% of their thickness at temperatures of up to 400 degrees centigrade. These results imply that the separators 